All right, so we're gonna be talking about the Krebs cycle today. The Krebs cycle basically comes right after aerobic glycolysis. So this is within a cell. If you just ate a donut, you broke it down to a glucose molecule. That glucose molecule split in half into pyruvate, and that pyruvate is what's gonna kind of start this Krebs cycle up. So the way this fits in the big picture again, guys, it's glycolysis, and then if you have oxygen, oxygen is required because the Krebs cycle is in the mitochondria. So if you have oxygen, then you're gonna to go to the mitochondria and then do the Krebs cycle. It's kind of debatable whether the pyruvate 2-acetyl-CoA is within the Krebs cycle, but we're gonna include it because most textbooks do. Pyruvate is that three carbon molecule. It's half of a glucose. So glycolysis cut it in half. Now you have pyruvates, and we're gonna break that down into acetyl-CoA. It's a three carbon molecule here, and then basically in the process of getting rid of a carbon that, that was a high energy bond, so when you broke that bond and put that carbon onto an oxygen and then you exhaled CO2, we also turned an NAD plus into an NADH. At this point, we have a two carbon molecule and this is where we really start the Krebs cycle, where it becomes a cycle. All right, so acetyl-CoA is that two carbon molecule. From the very first step, we're gonna co combine a two carbon acetyl-CoA with a four carbon oxaloacetate. The two things combined is gonna make citric acid. And some people think this is so important they name the Krebs cycle after, the, after it and call it the citric acid cycle. So you might see that as another name. But that citric acid now is gonna go through a number of basically phosphorylations of these products here. So we're gonna basically turn one product into another and then that second product will be used later on in oxidative phosphorylation, which we'll get to. But this process of just kind of changing energy is what we're doing multiple times in, in the rest of the Krebs cycle. So to start off, we're taking NAD plus to NADH. That's gonna be the first one. We're gonna do that a total of three times for one Krebs cycle. So one acetyl-CoA is gonna end up with three NADHs. So you'll see NADH here, here, and right there. In the process, we're also gonna get rid of two carbon dioxides. So we're gonna get rid of two carbons. So again, this was a six carbon. We're gonna rid of, get rid of two of them. It's gonna be that CO2 here and that CO2 here. That leaves us with a four carbon molecule to then come back up and basically continue around the cycle. Uh, so total in the Krebs cycle, guys, we have three NADHs and then there's actually a fourth one from up here so a total of four, kind of three within the cycle, that extra one here, four NADHs that come out of the Krebs cycle, one FADH2, or FADH from that FAD2+, plus. so one FADH, four NADHs, and then we also directly just get two ATP. So to back up big picture here, we got two ATP from glycolysis, we have two ATP from the Krebs cycle, and then now we're gonna continue with oxidative phosphorylation, and that's really gonna be where we're gonna get most of our ATP. So, over here we're looking at, now we have 10 NADHs. This is where those NADHs, we're gonna kinda of finally cash in on them and actually turn them into ATP. So, we had NADH, four of them were from, from the Krebs cycle. Again, we have two pyruvates. So we have two pyruvates. Each of those is gonna be four NADHs. So if we think about that, four here, uh, two times, that's gonna get us eight, and then another two of them were actually from glycolysis. So that's a total of 10 NADHs that we have that we kind of stored up, and now we're gonna turn those into energy. So we're gonna multiply those by three because we actually get three ATP per NADH molecule. The other part of oxidative phosphorylation is gonna be turning these FADHs into energy. We have two FADHs, Multiply that by two ATP per one of those molecules, and that's gonna get four. We have 30 ATP plus four ATP is gonna get us 34 ATP just from oxidative phosphorylation. And if we combine that with the two net from glycolysis and the two uh, ATP from the Krebs cycle, we get a total of 38 ATP. I did wanna add one thing here, guys. This is a little bit outside of the scope of like cellular respiration, um, but fat, can actually go through its own process of beta oxidation and break basically a giant fat molecule with a triglyceride backbone and a bunch of fatty acids, 
all the way down, those fatty acids can break down into acetyl-CoA molecules, and they can just jump in right here. So fat, um, if you have one molecule, it's kind of separate from glucose. It'll actually produce a ton of ATP, like over 300 ATP. But this is kind of where it enters the process and kind of gets mixed in with this part of bioenergetics. All right, guys, I hope you found this video helpful in understanding the Krebs cycle. If you did, go ahead and smash the like button and also subscribe because I have awesome videos like this coming out all the time. So uh, thanks for watching, guys.